Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I am Dr. Saurabh Dikshit and today I have brought a very small topic for all surgery residents and all the surgery enthusiasts. So today I am going to teach you about fluids. You know, as a surgeon, as a medical student, as a resident or as a paramedical staff, the first thing that you should be knowing is the confidence on the topic of fluids. So whenever we talk about the fluid, we have three questions in our mind. What are they? What should be the choice of fluid? Second is, what should be the volume that needs to be given to the patient and third is what should be the rate so choice volume and rate they are the three things which are very 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 important now when we talk about volume calculation so we have an option of calculating it in volume per uh, day in ml per day or volume in ml per hour so let us see volume calculation now when you talk about volume calculation in ml per day the things are a bit different and when you talk about the volume in ml per hour the things are a bit different now let us see how they are different so in between we shall write the first 10 kgs then second 10 kgs and then the further kgs so let us see how we define it so we take it as in the first 10 kgs in ml per day 100 ml per kg for first 10 kgs then it is 50 ml per kg for second 10 kgs and then it is 20 ml per kg for further kg so to make it easy and memorizable we have 150 20 150 20 then when you talk about ml per hour it is something like 4 ml per kg for first 10 kgs then second 10 kgs we have 2 ml per kg and then we have 1 ml per kg for the further kg so 150 20 for ml per day and 4 to 1 in ml per hour so it's a very simple calculation if you see a patient who is suppose uh, 80 kgs or let us see 80 kgs and you require it you require to calculate the fluid requirement so it is 100 ml per kg for first 10 along with that 50 ml per kg for next 10 and then 20 ml per kg for the remaining kgs so if you add it you will get somewhere around 1500, 1500 and then 1200 more so that is 2700 ml per day this is what is very 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 important 2700 ml per day the next is similarly if you want to calculate it in ml per hour how you can do it so 4 ml per kg for first 10 then 2 ml per kg for next 10 and then try to understand 1 ml per kg for further kgs so that is 40 20 and again 60 so that is 120 ml per hour students if you multiply this 120 ml per hour by 24 the volume that you will get will be slightly different then what you got in ml per day formula why this is so try to understand ideally the thing that we are writing as 4 ml per kg should have been 3.8 so to make the formula easy and memorizable and recallable we have rounded it off to 4 so we use 4 to 1 remember students nothing will go if you give 100 or 200 ml extra fluid but yes if you forget the formula you create a mess so try to understand once you get the formula then you calculate the volume the next is rate evaluation now why rate evaluation is very 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 important because you need to start it so you'll ask sister sister start 2700 ml per day so she'll smile at you and say doctor i'm not that intelligent tell me how many drops to start i'll set it down to that so next is rate estimation rate estimation now when you talk about rate estimation there are two important things in this rate estimation column what are they the rate estimation can be done as drops per minute so drops per minute i can write as dpm drops per minute can be written as d p and m now there are two tricks for drops per minute drops per minute is defined as volume in ml per day volume in ml per day divided by 100 now this is what is very important similarly we have volume in ml per hour divided by 4 so let us try to understand suppose if you say 2800 ml per day how many hundreds are there in this 28 so how many drops per minute 
28 drops per minute. I'm giving you an example. Similarly, if you want to start 200 ml per hour, so how many drops per minute? 200 divided by 4 and that is 50 drops per minute. So isn't it very, very, very easy? This is what is making the fluids very easy. So now you have calculated the volume, you have calculated the rate. The next is what should be the choice of fluid. So what fluid you should take it out from your shelf. Now this is again very, very, very simple thing. So the types of fluids that we have. So in a nutshell, I will revise quickly with you. There are three standard categories of fluid. The category A is crystalloid. The category A is crystalloid. And do you know this is the most commonly used fluid? This is most commonly used fluid. So the first line fluid of choice, the most commonly used fluid is crystalloid. The second is we have colloids. So we have crystalloid, we have colloids. And then third is we have blood and blood products. So we have blood and blood products. So they are very, very, very important. So let us see which is the best answer is the best fluid replacement is replace blood by blood. That is what. So there is no choice, no controversy, no comparison in that. Now when we talk about the crystalloid, try to understand what are the various type of crystalloids that we have. And they are the first line fluid. So crystalloids are further of three categories. One is hypotonic, the second is isotonic and the third one is hypertonic. So we prefer to use isotonic fluids in majority of the patients. Now when you talk about hypotonic fluid, we have only one fluid in this category that is 5% dextrose. Now when you talk about isotonic fluids, we have something which is known as 0.9% NaCl, I hope you know and this is the most commonly used fluid. Then we have Ringer lactate, we have Ringer lactate. What else do we have? So we have NaCl, we have Ringer lactate. One more fluid that we have is, that is plasma light. So plasma light or isolite P, isolite M, isolite G, all these things. Now when you talk about hypertonic fluids, we have three normal, five normal NaCl, you know hypertonic salines. 3 normal, 5 normal, even 10 normal NaCl is there. Then we have DNS and then there is one more solution which is known as Darrow solution. Now when you talk about Darrow solution, this is also known as lactated saline. So what is the best part of this lactated saline? The answer is that it is having maximum K plus concentration. So since it is having maximum K plus concentration, it is ideal fluid for replacement of what students? Potassium. Now, the controversy is not with the blood, the controversy is with the colloids. Now, majority of the students, they find themselves trapped in this world of colloids. They don't understand what is the difference between colloids and crystalloid. Crystalloids are the first line fluid, colloids are the show stoppers. They are the buzz, like the body, Bollywood, Hollywood people create, so that is what is colloid. What are colloids? They are synthetic, they are synthetic bioengineered or biostructured yeah synthetic heavy protein molecules so synthetic heavy protein molecules and what will happen with these heavy protein molecule students their aim is to increase the crowd and how they will increase the crowd by increasing the plasma oncotic pressure so the aim is to increase the plasma oncotic pressure and thus therefore therefore as the osmosis follows a rule that the water or fluid will flow from low osmolar state to high osmolar state, it will draw inside the water inside the vascular compartment and thus they are going to cause volume expansion. So therefore, they are also known as volume expanders. I shall also explain you the mechanism how the colloids are working. So this is what is very, 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 very important. When we talk about the mechanism of colloid, it is very simple. Suppose you have a patient because colloids are very commonly used during surgeries. So suppose I am doing a surgery. All of a sudden the patient is having some catastrophic bleeding unfortunately and there is a lot of you can say blood loss and this has resulted in hypotension. So you will get the blood but that will take some time. So now the patient is having hypotension. Yeah. So how will this colloid work? So do you know this is what is IVS, intravascular space and this is what is known as EVS, that is extravascular space. So we have intravascular space and extravascular space. Quickly the anesthetist or the sister will rush and get a bottle of what? Colloid. 
and do you know these are magical molecules so you will plan to give these magical molecules quickly inside so the moment you give these magical molecules what these molecules are going to do they are heavy protein molecules so whenever you have a patient of hypotension and give you give colloid this is going to increase the plasma oncotic pressure so once it increases the plasma oncotic pressure what is going to happen students this is going to increase the plasma oncotic pressure of intravascular space and therefore it withdraws so there is withdrawal there is withdrawal of fluid into or you can say from the extravascular space into the intravascular space and this is what is very 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 important and this is what you needed and therefore therefore there is correction of what hypotension so there is influx of fluid into the intravascular space and therefore the hypotension that you were seeing got automatically what corrected this is what is the beauty of colloids now do you know that colloids are contraindicated in the first 12 to 24 hours yeah of hypovolemic shock now this is why this is so this is again very 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 important so colloids are contraindicated are contraindicated in first 12 to 24 hours of you can say hypovolemic shock to find this out you have to go to my detailed lectures of master course of surgery and you will understand all the basic things in that because there we have taken this chapter for a very 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 lengthy discussion because i want my surgery residents to be very confident in answering these things but still i will tell you in nutshell that do you know that in the early phase of shock in the early phase of shock what happens and that too hypovolemic shock what is happening there is opening of gap junctions and since there is opening of gap junctions there is tendency there is tendency of this colloid to leak out into the extravascular space so the reverse of what is anticipated happens and that is why colloids are not given in the first 12 to 24 hours and this integrity is reversed back that means the gap junction or tight junction again restore their leaky uh, restore their tight junction status after 12 to 24 hours so after 24 hours you can confidently give now i would not go into the depth of different colloids just i will tell you what are the various colloids which are available in the market the first is recombinant human albumin recombinant human albumin and when we talk about recombinant human albumin it is available in two forms one is 5% and one is 20% do you know 20% causes five times volume expansion and 5% causes one time volume expansion 5% increases the oncotic pressure by 20 mmHg and this increases the oncotic pressure by 70 mmHg so this is again very 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 important that oncotic pressures the oncotic pressures are also elevated in this next is we have something which is known as dextran the problem with dextran is that it is associated with a high rate of anaphylaxis why because it is prepared by a combination of leuconostoc mesenteroid mesenteroids and streptococcus mutants incubated in a what glucose solution or sucrose media for one month that is why it is having a lot of lipopolysaccharides or you can say tachoic acid components in it and this is what is a big problem the second is it prolongs the life you can say bleeding time and thus hemostasis is not achieved this is useful in cases when you infuse dextran post cabg when you have done microvascular anastomosis there is a tendency that stenosis might occur so there it is helpful or in dvt limbs also it is helpful the third that we have is hemexyl now what is hemexyl what is hemexyl this is nothing but you are fond of ice cream and whenever you see commercially prepared ice cream they use the gelatin so this is a degraded gelatin polymer this is degraded degraded gelatin polymer and the next is the fourth that we understand is we have heta starch so when you talk about heta starch it is ethoxylated ethoxylated amylopectin polymer amylopectin polymer so this is what is very 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 important and i just tried to create a small topic so that you can understand the basics of the fluid now one more thing that we need to understand in this is something about the blood 
So I'm not going to discuss each and everything about the blood. Whenever we talk about blood transfusion, whenever we talk about blood transfusion, and whenever you require a large volume of blood tra transfusion, that thing is known as massive blood transfusion. Now, what is the concept of massive blood transfusion? Whenever you require more than equal to 10 units, 10 units blood transfusion, or even more than equal to 6 units, 6 units per or post-operative. So per or post surgery, if you require even six units, then also you'll follow this concept. So the concept is that you don't give whole blood because whole blood is devoid of its component and lot of things. So it can add the just the serum causing the dilution of coagulation factors and resulting in coagulopathy. So remember one very important thing that if you are giving the whole blood, you have to be understanding that one or two units are okay. But when you require it for a longer, you can say uh, you can say more blood volumes to be transfused you don't use this rather we follow the mtp massive transfusion protocol and what is that give one is to one is to one so prbc then ffp and then platelets so this is how you should be doing and this is what is very important the last but not least you have to start the fluid so before that you have to insert a cannula and you get lot of things lot of confusion in cannula so during residency we feel like take a small cannula insert it it's, it's easy but remember students you should be knowing whether it is serving your purpose or no so on one side we write the size of the cannula on one side we write the color of the cannula on one side we write the flow rate of the cannula so exact cannula size is very very important and one side we write the use of the cannula so size of the cannula we have 14 g this is orange and this is the cannula with the widest bore and heaviest flow then we have 16 g and that is what is gray so 14 g this is 240 ml per minute this is 180 ml per minute then we have 17 g which is actually the white cannula and this is 120 ml per minute do you know all these three cannulas they are the cannula of choice for rapid resuscitation so whenever you have a patient in trauma bay Yes, you should be preferring these three cannulas, any, anything among them. Then we have 18G. This is the green that we have. And do you know the flow rate is 90 ml per minute. And this is the cannula which is required for all surgeries. So all surgeries we prefer to use a green, not a pink. Remember, you should be very, your eyes will never see what your brain doesn't know. And whenever you go, you take the patient for surgery and then you start getting a lot of uh, you can say hated ex heated exchange uh, from your seniors or from your professors why because you don't know that you have given a pink you have put a pink cannula and pink cannula is not sufficient for surgery so whenever you're shifting a patient to or operative room you should be knowing that yes the cannula you have taken is right or no so pink cannula then we talk about is having a flow rate of only 60 ml per minute so this is good for iv infusions but not for the surgeries then we have 22G that is the blue and that is having a flow rate of 45 ml per minute. So when you talk about 45 ml per minute, 24G is yellow that is 30 ml per minute. Where should you be using them? Answer is they are for what? Pediatric use. So pediatric use. Do you know there is one more for pediatric that is violet and violet is having the 14 or 15 ml per minute average and this is again for the newborn newborn or you can say for the uh, neonates this is what is very 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 important so i hope you enjoyed this crisp small important lecture i will be getting many more topics for you and do subscribe to my channel do like it and do comment in the comment section you liked it or no or whether you like or what topics do you want for the revision so I hope you're enjoying me. Thank you.